Hi, this is Mark again from MyWhistleAndFlute.com. Most of you will already know this, but if you're just learning to play an open keyed flute or whistle, like the penny whistle, or one of these uh, Irish style open keyed flutes, that means they don't have uh, finger, uh, finger keys and pads to hold it down, your finger does all of that. Sometimes the fingerings can be a little bit confusing. Uh, my wife plays a regular concert flute, and when she first started trying to learn it, uh, try to play one of uh, the flutes that we make, uh, she struggled a little bit because the fingering is different. The good news is, once you learn the fingering on either a penny whistle or one of those open keyed flutes, regardless of the key, the fingering patterns are the same. The notes are different if the keys are different but the fingering patterns remain the same. And that's good news, because then you can play either one. It takes a little bit of difference, uh, takes a little bit of time uh, to, uh, let me go ahead and move my camera here. It takes a little bit of time to learn the difference between playing like this versus playing a flute like this, but the fingering positions are the same. I keep saying that because it's true. And I'm gonna walk you through um, the, uh, the fingering positions in the first octave, and maybe even go into the second octave, and then show you how it works on both a penny whistle and a flute. So the very first root note is all of the um, all of the holes covered. I think I should mention first of all that whether it's one of these flutes or whether it's a penny whistle, there's something called overblowing and that is how you get into the second octave. So with, for example, if I have uh, all th these five notes uh, holes covered and I play this note, which happens to be E on this D penny whistle. Just by blowing slightly harder, I can overblow into the second octave. So here's the bottom, second octave. Ooh, almost into the third octave there. So um, if some of, one of the mistakes a lot of beginners make is they blow too hard to start. It really is just a gentle pressure that comes from your diaphragm and almost through the back of your throat. Not really a because you're going to overblow, but let the let the force of it come from the back of your mouth into the whistle, and it'll get a much nicer sound. All right. The second thing is that your tongue can be used um, to like a staccato, but it can help to break the air uh, when you're going into that second octave. So I place my tongue right on the tip of where the air goes into the mouthpiece here, and that's where and that's what you'll hear. And again, some of that is practice to get uh, faster and better. But so using your tongue, blowing a little harder, second octave. All right, this is the D penny whistle, which means that the all all the holes covered is the D. It's actually the D above um, above middle C. No, that's not right. It's the it's the D above high C. So you have middle C and D. Then an octave higher is D. It's what's called D four, um, maybe D five. Anyway. Uh, so an octave above middle C is where this D begins, all right? So all covered is that D. Then it goes up the scale. A scale consists of a major scale goes with whole and half steps. And the pattern is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. I think I said that right. Whole, whole, half whole, whole, whole half. Um, so is that, is that eight? Yeah, uh, seven. Yeah, that's seven. So that's right. Um, so um, we could, uh, I can go into more of that in another, in another lesson. So essentially when in the key of D we have uh, two sharps, F and uh, uh, F sharp and C sharp. So I won't, again, won't walk all through all that, but we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, that's all open. And then we're going to, that's at the top of the octave, then the, the uh, high do, the high D. Now there's a couple things that happened there. One, when I got to all open, some people might be saying, well, how, how am I going to hold the, the penny whistle if all of the fingers are up? Well. I have my 
right thumb underneath the bottom here, and I generally keep my pinky on the end of the penny whistle because I use the top three fingers on each hand um, to uh, to cover the holes. Some people like maybe would like to use their their pinkies. That's fine. I just find index middle ring index middle ring works the best. So I have my thumbs on the back of the penny whistle, and then and then I have my uh, right pinky that is available to hold the penny whistle. So when I get all the way to the top, I have the pressure from my mouth down on the penny whistle, my thumbs up and my in, and my and my pinky down. So my thumb, my, my mouth is holding downward pressure. My two thumbs are pressing up against that. And so if I didn't have my pinky, it would just it would it would flip like this. So my pinky presses down and that keeps it level. So it's, it's down pressure, up, up, down pressure. And it, it enables me to allow my fingers to move freely, my index middle ring fingers to move freely without having to worry about holding the penny whistle. Okay, so there's that. Next, you, know, you might have noticed that I uncovered this top hole, this left index finger hole, when I played the high, the high do. So low D, excuse me, high do. If you've ever watched Sound of Music, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Those aren't names of notes. Those are, well, they kind of are, but again, we're going to get way off track if I try to go into that. But low Do. That fingering, low Do and high Do, work the same whether you're playing a D penny whistle, a C penny whistle, a B flat penny whistle, an A penny whistle, a low, a low D penny whistle. It doesn't matter. The lowest root note, um, when you overblow, you lift off your left index finger and you'll hit that... Um, note an octave higher. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, all the way up. Here we go. Another thing that you can do, which I realized I just did there, was I used my ring finger on this on this bottom note. There is minimal, in most cases, minimal and hardly discernible difference in the tone if I hold this closed and all the others are open. Let's just see if I can hear the difference. You can't either. There's no difference there. So I have I'm going up with these when I get to when I get to the high dough. Really when I get up to about here I can I can bring this this finger back down. So watch my fingers again carefully. And you try to follow along if you have uh, one of our penny whistles or a penny whistle of your own. Just get it and play along. If it's not in a D, it won't sound right, but copy the fingerings. So, here we go. Sorry, I made a mistake. Let's do it again. So that's one octave from D to D. Now on a well-made penny whistle, as I think ours are, you're able to go up to a second octave. In some cases, you can even hit up in the third octave. With something like a D, that's going to be really, really shrill. But you can hit that second that second octave. And it is just a revert, or, or, or you just go over the same fingerings again. So I'm at the high do. Now it's time for me to put this finger back down, just like I did before, and lift off my, lift off my lower ring finger. So... Um, I'm at the high do. Woo, that's the third. Um, I hope that wasn't too shrill in your ears there. Um, but going all the way from low do to high do, it's it's the same fingerings all over again for the second octave. So. If you've never played before, it's going to be hard for you to get those notes. You're going to have a lot of um, transition between low and high, and it's going to be very, very frustrating. Just start by getting a clear first octave. And again, work on changing the breath pressure from your stomach to, um, uh, to through your mouth for, for getting that octave. And don't be afraid to use um, to use your tongue to break that air, which will help you hit that second octave. Now, that's the penny whistle. If I'm playing something like our uh, our G flute, 
this is our, um, I believe this is our traveler, uh, the traveler in G, we call it. Um, but it's the exact same fingerings. Now, there's a whole different technique for getting the, the sound across this, which I'm not going through on this video. I have another video on learning to get a sound on a transverse flute. But the fingerings are the same. On the penny whistle, I'm holding like this. With the flute, I'm just changing positions. But everything works the exact same way for the octave, although this is G. It's low do, high do. See? Same finger is up as it was in the penny whistle. So from low to high. Okay, so again, from down to high. Low, high, all open. Again, I'm using my chin and, and lip, and in this case, I'm actually pressing against the flute so the flute is, is, is trying to go this way. I'm using my left, my left um, index finger between the, 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 the bottom and the, and the middle knuckle to press back against my, against my lip. And I'm using my thumb on my right hand and my, pink, and my pinky to, uh, to, again, hold that so that I can play all the notes open. So here we go again. And again, I'm using my tongue to get that, to, to break that up. But again, the fingerings would remain the same in the second octave as they would for the first. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, uh, leave a question in the comment. If this is incredibly basic, you're probably already not watching this video at this point. If you're still watching, I'm assuming it's because this is information you didn't have. So whether you're playing uh, an open keyed penny whistle or you're playing a six hold, and I should mention that, that this these are for six hold. They do make uh, four, five, and even seven hold flutes, but traditional uh, six hold whistles or flutes like what we make at mywhistleandflute.com, these fingerings will work. They're the basic fingerings for the basic octave. There are alternative fingerings, which we can talk about in another video. But I hope that helps, and I, good luck on playing. Playing an instrument is a joy, and if I can help in any way, leave a comment in the comment section of this video, or shoot me an email at info at mywhistleandflute.com or mywhistleandflute at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to help any way that I can. See you around, and if I can help you per to purchase your own flute or whistle, let me know. Have a great day. Happy whistling.